Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Mr. Darasi, and I'm going to continue with and finish our lecture on the overall process of meiosis. Today we will learn about the second step of meiosis called meiosis II. As a quick refresher, what we finished up in our last video is we started the process of meiosis I and we took one original somatic diploid cell. Remember what diploid means, you have two versions for every chromosome. So in this example, if I have a cell in interphase, and by the time it copies all of its chromosomes, and I get the prophase number one of meiosis one, I can see those chromosomes. And there are a total of one, two, three, four, five, six. So in this example, the original diploid number is six. For us, it would be 46, but you can't fit 46 chromosomes in here in this little tiny picture. So we have six chromosomes or six sister chromatid pairs, or remember each half of the X is a chromatid, so that means we have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 chromatids. Key difference, remember, that happens in meiosis one compared to mitosis is we have something called synapsis that occurs, where the homologous chromosomes, that means the versions of a chromosome from both mom and dad, find each other and embrace. When they do, you form a homologous pair, or also what is known as a tetrad. And then they experience the exchange of genetic information called crossing over. As meiosis I proceeds, you could see that the chromosomes line up as homologous pairs or tetrads, not individual sister chromatid pairs. So by the time you get to anaphase I, following it up with telophase I instead of kinesis, you will produce two haploid cells that will only have half the genetic information that you started with. So that means here you can see we're starting with six chromosomes, but if I could, you see these three chromosomes going to the top and these three going to the bottom. If I could draw a circle around them to represent the new cells forming, each cell would only have three chromosomes and they would officially be haploid. But we do not want to keep cells that still have chromosomes in the X shape or the sister chromatid pair form. So we are going to require a second division stage or meiosis two to split those sister chromatid pairs. So if we continue here for meiosis two, it'll be very similar once again to how meiosis one preceded. We're still gonna have the same PMAT steps, but now we're gonna call them prophase 2 or metaphase 2, etc., because now we're in the second division phase. We're not going to go through all the nitty-gritty specifics of what's happening here. We're more focused on how we can reduce the chromosome number, but the same things that would happen in mitosis would also happen here. Some additional things to remember is this. There is really just a short break between meiosis 1 and meiosis 2, not the typical interphase period that you would think of which means there is no DNA replication occurring. There is no copying of organelles. There's just a short break in between meiosis one and where the two cells that we made in meiosis one start to go through meiosis two. If I look at this image here, let's pick up, this would be the end of meiosis one where we can see our two cells that now only have one, two, three chromosomes. They have not yet split, but once cytokinesis occurs, you would have two individual haploid cells. Again, one, two, three chromosomes in each. But now meiosis two has to occur, so we can split these sister chromatid pairs. As you proceed through meiosis two, see how the chromosomes line up now in metaphase two? Now there is individual chromosomes or sister chromatid pairs. So we're gonna have three lined up individually in each of these two cells. If these were our cells, you'd have 23 axes lined up individually in each cell. As we proceed through, get to anaphase two, once again, the sister chromatid pairs split. Now I can count one, two, three, four, five, six chromosomes temporarily until I get to telophase two and cytokinesis where I'm gonna produce eventually two cells that only have one, two, three individual chromosomes, exactly half the chromosome number that we started with in the beginning, which was six. Don't forget, meiosis two is occurring to both cells that we made for meiosis one. 
which is why we're going to go in meiosis 2 from two cells that are haploid to a total of one, two, three, four cells that are still haploid. They just have individual copies of the chromosomes rather than still existing in the sister chromatid pair forms. And that's the end. So we went meiosis 1, we produced, we went from one diploid cell to one, two haploid cells. And now in meiosis 2, we've gone from two haploid cells to produce a total of four haploid cells. So overall, our outcome is as follows. Again, the two cells from meiosis 1, which each had 23 chromosomes or sister chromatid pairs, so that means they were in that X shape, have now divided again and produced a total of four haploid cells that now each only have, again, if it's a human cell, 23 single chromosomes. So I did like a single line to represent just a single copy. Again, each chromosome and all four cells that we've made are completely different and unique. They have never existed before. A male makes millions of sperm every day. That's insane. Millions upon millions over a week. And every single one of those sperm is completely different and unique because of that process we discussed in our last video, crossing over, that happens in prophase one of meiosis one. A male could make trillions of sperm over his life and never ever would one of those sperm been identical to a previous sperm he made. Females do not make as many um, egg cells, obviously, because females down here in our last bullet point make eggs, not sperm like males do. Males are undergoing meiosis in their testicles to produce sperm. Females, you undergo meiosis in your ovaries to produce eggs, or the official term would be an ovum if you've heard that before in another class, such as health. And again, females, your eggs would also be unique compared to any other egg you would have made prior in your lifespan. Looking at a picture like this, just to give us an overall comparison visually between mitosis and meiosis. If I start with an original parent cell, let's pretend this is in a man's testicles and his diploid somatic number is only four. Again, it would be 46 for us. If he wants to undergo mitosis, all these four chromosomes replicate. So here you can see four sister chromatid pairs, but they never come near each other. Then they line up individually like a single file line during metaphase. In anaphase, the sister chromatid pairs will split. And after telophase and cytokinesis, you have produced two cells that have four chromosomes, just like the original parent cell. And these are identical. They are clones of that original parent somatic cell. So that's mitosis. If the cell in the testicle of a male decided, hey, we're running out of sperm. We need to make more sperm. Then they go through meiosis. Chromosomes replicate. And you can see the key difference again first here is they come together via synapsis to form what we call homologous pairs or tetrads. And then crossing over occurs where they exchange genetic information. Second difference is, see how they line up? Mitosis, they line up individually. Meiosis, they line up as tetrads or homologous pairs. And then after anaphase 1 and telophase 1 and meiosis 1 is complete, you have two cells that now, if we count our centromeres, only have one, two. One, two chromosomes. So these two cells after meiosis 1 are officially haploid. They do not have four chromosomes like the original diploid parent did. They only have two. However, our problem is we do not need sister chromatid pair forms. So meiosis 2 occurs where these two cells will each undergo meiosis 2. Each cell will split into two new cells. So that's where I get my total of four individual haploid cells. Again, they only have now one, two individual chromosomes. And they're all a little different. You can see a little blue tip on this red one here from the crossing over process that happened up here. So now we have again in it at the end four cells that are officially haploid. These four could turn into either a sperm, if it's a male, like what I was discussing, or they could become an egg cell in a female. So to finish up overall and to review it, 
Our comparison is mitosis only has one division stage, so one PMAT, while meiosis has two division stages, or PMAT1 and PMAT2. Mitosis, we produce two identical diploid somatic cells. Meiosis, we are making, so my, between meiosis 1 and meiosis 2, we're making a total of four haploid cells that are completely different. And again, we are producing just body cells or somatic cells during mitosis, while the process of meiosis is reserved solely for the formation of gametes, or sex cells, which are sperm and egg. Lastly, for just a visualization, visualization here, uh, looking at two cells here, let's pretend these are two somatic cells that only have a diploid number of two chromosomes. Visually speaking, if we drag it out, we're going to focus on meiosis first. I can see the chromosomes condensing. They've already duplicated, so I have my X shapes. So both cells are still diploid. If we continue focusing on the left for meiosis, you're going to see synapsis occurring where crossing over occurs. So this is a tetrad or homologous pair right now. And then tetrads line up and eventually split during anaphase 1. And after telophase 1 and cytokinesis, I have two cells that are now officially haploid. They only have one chromosome apiece. We start it with two. We don't want the sister chromatid pairs, so we go through meiosis 2, where the sister chromatid pairs will separate. You can see the centrioles here. These will be the spindle fibers, which will attack to the, attach to the kinetic core of the centromere. The sister chromatid pairs split during anaphase 2, and after telophase 2 and cytokinesis, we will get a total of four haploid cells that are all unique. You can see how they're all a little bit different with different parts of chromosomes from crossing over. They only have one individual chromosome as opposed to two that we started with. While in mitosis, again, chromosomes line up individually in metaphase. In anaphase, it's the sister chromatid pairs that separate. So you technically have four chromosomes here right now until telophase and cytokinesis occur, where I have two cells that are both identical. They're both somatic, which means they're diploid because they have the two versions of each chromosome that we started with originally with our parent. Hopefully this clarifies any misconceptions or confusion you may have had in regards to mitosis and meiosis. If not, make sure to email me as soon as you can so I can try to clarify things for you. Thank you everyone and take care.